And uh, we're live. So welcome to this Hangout. Today we're going to be talking about something that's pretty interesting and leading edge is Google My Business. Now Google My Business used to be known as Google Places, but it's changed recently. And I re recognize that we need to get some people who actually know what they're talking about to give us a bit of the detail of the distinction between Google My Business and Google Places and what we need to do. So I'd like to welcome uh, Ian and Andrew to the call. G'day, guys. Hey, you going, David? How are you? Yeah, very well, very well. Um, look, uh, just maybe give us a bit of a background, what you guys do for a living, or for fun, I should say, and uh, <laughs> sort of pick it up from there. Bit of both, I guess. Bit of both. It's all rolled into one at the moment. Yeah, yeah we're we're loving what we do, so I guess it's a yeah, it's a bit of a it's a it's a bit of a good life. Uh, basically, uh, I'm Ian Hopkinson, Andrew Radix, Andrew Radix, Ian Hopkinson. Um, our background is really uh, in, in uh, primarily SEO is our focus um, with a, a digital overview, um, yep. and uh, yeah, so that's that's without going into our life story, that's our that's our focus. Well, well I'll I'll just add to that because mad scientists digital have been around for a little bit of time, but um, like not only SEO, you guys are very good at actually understanding how to tie in with the social media and with the local search. And I suppose you piqued my curiosity when you talked to me about Google My Business and uh, I suppose the potential for especially localized businesses to really cash in on a, a low cost way of getting search rankings. So um, maybe we'll just start with a bit of background. So Google My Business or Google Places, what's, what's the story behind it? Okay, um, it's a it's a very complicated story with, with Google. Like you said, it started off as Google Places back in 2011, I think it was somewhere around there, and just recently it's changed to Google My Business. Essentially, it's the same thing, but the way that it's set up is slightly different. So when we're talking about Google My Places, we're talking when you do a local search for say you know pizza shop Melbourne, um, the first thing that'll probably come up in your search. Um, you'll see these little teardrops, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, yep. And you'll see the, little, um, the, the name of a business next to it. So basically the idea is for you to actually get on that. So if someone's doing a local search for, for your type of business, you should be there. And the right. only way you'll be there is if the Google My Places page is set up. Google My Business. Sorry, Google My Business. You're going to them even more. Yeah. <laughs> Google My Business page, yeah. Okay, so, so this Google My Business, I know you, I, I've even seen the ads on TV, so I know Google are getting pretty sort of uh, ferocious with getting getting business owners aware of this. Um, tell us a bit about, you know, what, what are the tips and tricks? What do people need to know about um, in regard to Google My Business? What, what does a typical business owner need to do? All right, well, obviously if you want to go in there and claim that particular page, um, you're going to... Uh, just type in Google My Business, and then the first URL that pops up, click on it, and then you need to search for your business. So a little search bar will come up on the top left, search for your business, if it comes up, if Google has actually created a page for you, you just um, click on it, and then it will take you through the actual setup process, and you need to go through the verification process as well, which you know can take between one and two weeks, or they can actually call your business telephone number, but only if Google has actually listed your business. So if you're a fairly new business, you probably won't be listed. So then you need to go through the whole manual setup process, which is a little bit convoluted you know, in a sense as well. It is. It can take sometimes up to six to eight weeks if you don't know uh, what you're doing to do this. Right. And a lot of people have lost concentration. I've had so many people say to me, Google Places, yeah, we had one of those and we, yeah, I think we set it up. Oh, I'm not sure. That's what we get um, as a reaction quite a, quite a few times when we're talking to businesses about this. Right, excellent. So, so really if we, if we get to the nub of it, what's so important about Google My Business for the business owner? Why, why is it critical that they get this sorted out, they get online, they register their business and they get it sort of up, up to speed? Yeah. It literally puts them on the map and, and here's why. Google Places um, used to Popped, automatically populate the listings from yellow pages and from other directories. Google right. doesn't do that anymore. So if you're not on Google My Business, 
you're not on the map. Google's not going to automatically put you there. You have to actually do this um, yourself you know, or, or, or through a company like us. And really, if you're a local business, why wouldn't you want to come up in your local listing? Like I said, if you're a pizza shop in Melbourne, for example, you want to be there. It's like back in the old days, if uh, for those of you who might remember that Yellow Pages ad, um, it's a big deal if you forgot to put your ad in the Yellow Pages. So that meant that you weren't seen for a whole year. Whereas yeah. now, of course, Yellow Pages aren't as big anymore. Google, um, my business has virtually taken that over. So if you're not there, you're really not in business locally, are you? So that's right. why it's so important for people to actually get that done. So you mentioned a key point there because I think traditionally Google places used to steal business names from yellow pages or white pages or something because people would find their business even though they never put it in. Yes. And, and I think there's another sort of message in there. This whole local search market has really become more and more relevant because I suppose from Google's perspective as a company, they're trying to make sure that their search results are relevant to someone. If I'm looking yep. for pizza, I want to find pizza shops within a five kilometre radius, not pizza shops in Sydney or in, in LA. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Right. That's so, it. Yeah, and and the local pizza shop, I suppose, uh, you know, as an example, for many many years have been absolutely given a barrage of advice. You need a website. You need a website. The great thing about this um, Google My Business setup is that um, it's also a visual experience. You don't actually have to have a website. You don't have to maintain a website. This is this is something that is um, quite. Great in, in, in the branding that you can do. Um, obviously, you've got all the basic information there, your, your opening hours and and all that sort of thing. But you can even put a virtual tour. You can put videos up there. This is virtually a website now, um, and, and it's a great upgrade to the, to the Google Places system. Right, right. So really, that, that brings me to the next point, which is, OK, so we've got this Google My Business, and what you just said is it actually could be a substitute for a website or it could be a second website. So we can put things on there like video, photos, um, other information, opening hours, access numbers, email addresses. Um, yeah. there's a, is there a specific way people need to go about setting this thing up? Well, to actually set it up, um, as Ian said, can take quite some time. Um, but anybody can do it, obviously then it's not only setting up the, the Google My Business page, then you need to basically duplicate what you put into your Google My Business page. You need to duplicate it in um, a whole host of the other online directories, such as, um, what's one? True uh, Local? True Local, yeah. Um, Yelp even if you're a restaurant and all these sort of things. But the thing is, all of that information has to be identical because Google checks every now and then to see that your listing on Google My Business is the same as your listing in all the other ones so that it can say, okay, this business is still open, yes, the opening times are still the same and so on. So it's a very time consuming process and that's why most people have done both with it. Okay, and, and you may, you may have good there. Um, just talking about these other directories, what's the significance of making sure that your information is in these other directories? In, in the eyes of Google, um, if you have there's the right information across multiple directories, you're a current up-to-date business. They take you more seriously. And of course, as a result, because Google is a search engine and it is about the users, they put your listing further up than the other ones that aren't as together. So it, it ranks you higher in search. That's a really important aspect of this. Okay, so, so what you're saying is we need to not only register our business online, we need to be looking at all the other directories and making sure that our information is correct and consistent across those directories to get better Google rankings? Yes. Yeah. That's and right. And the, the, other, the other key point is the customer reaction side of it. You know, you've, you've, once you've got, um, once you've staked your, your claim on, on your, your Google real estate and your other directories, if you're getting reviews up there, you're then able to respond in a timely manner um, to customer um, issues. Right, so, so I mean what you've just mentioned there is the whole idea of having the reviews up there as well, which is obviously testimonials in the old world, but having the reviews up there gives us credibility through Google but also allows 
our potential clients to actually see a bit or hear a bit from our past or existing satisfied clients as well. Yep, that's it. And it's absolutely crucial, obviously, to be managing that um, and to be able to respond um, to, your, to your customers. Okay. Um, not only that, you should be sending your customers there to to write good things about you because, yeah. as we all know, people like to complain more than they like to say how good you are. Um, so you know, should encourage your happy customers to, to go and write things about you and, and you know, balance the viewpoint. Right, okay, so really like what you're suggesting is it's pretty key to make sure the information is relevant, it's set up in the right way to get the best search results out of this local search engine. Now, can you, go, can you help anyone out there who sort of struggles with this whole notion of putting this together? I mean, is there a service that you guys offer? We have, actually have a service that will we'll put uh, your business, will set you up on Google, Google My Business and the local directories as well. We'll do all of that for you. We'll even do some keyword research for you so that you make sure that you're optimizing um, your business in local search um, specific to your target audience. And we'll do all of that. Um, we're actually going to offer a special 50% off deal to the to uh, to your your list, David, just for September only. Okay, Are you excited why, about that? Why would you be so kind? <laughs> I keep asking myself the same question. For sharing the love, <laughs> for sharing the love. No, we we want. Um, I know we actually have a genuine concern that, um, and we've seen it quite a few times, where businesses have not. Um, been in the know about their listings, not claiming, taking control of their real estate. And uh, one particular example where a restaurant, um, the page was claimed and whoever it was that claimed their page fraudulently told their customers that their business was closed on the weekends and subsequently that business has now, has now gone under as a result. So mm. this is kind of a a concern of ours that, that people aren't aware of this um, and we want to help them get set up and, and mm -hmm. at least have a, an awareness that there's a whole thing happening here that could actually be a, a, an issue with their business if they mm -hmm. have their eyes on, on the ball. Let me just mention a quick local example here. We, we went to one of the local businesses here and we told him, do you realise that on your Google My Business page it says that you are closed? But your store is closed down. That's right, closed permanently, yeah. He had no idea. And so people were looking for him or his type of service and then first result that comes up says this business has been closed. Right. He didn't even know about it. So that's why we keep saying it's so important to claim that page for your business. Okay, so, so really the, the key message here is claim your page. Make sure you optimise it to a degree and fill it with content. Make sure that you get onto the other... Um, the other directory sites to make sure your data is consistent and that'll lift your rankings. Um, is there some sort of cheat sheet that you could offer the guys so if they want to have a go at this themselves they can sort of get a bit of a rough and ready reckoner? Yeah, sure. They can. We can give you a, a checklist. I mean, I think that I think the main thing that uh, people want to know is whether they actually have a page that is some sort of remnant from the past, mm -hmm. and, and and actually that would be handy. Um, if they're going to work with us on this, that would be handy for us to know up front because obviously we have to go and do a bit of research and find out what's there so we know what we're dealing with. Um, you know, we had an example the other day with one particular client who's, who had a Google Places page, but when Google did the update, it moved the, the red droplet down the street. So yeah. their Google Places page was all fine, but because of this update, um, people didn't actually know where their business was. So it, was. it was showing to be a different restaurant down the street and that's that's another concern obviously and that even if we put that on our checklist that's something that people would have trouble with. So, um, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well I, I suppose look, the, the key message out of today is really going to be make sure that people find out where they are, what their status is of their Google My Business. Um, whether they have one or not. Secondly, to make sure that it's congruent with the other search engines and, and really just to make sure that they do treat it like it's a website because yeah. I think 
that was quite valuable. Some businesses actually don't need a website. They just need to make sure Google My Business is, uh, is relevant. Yeah, so you, can, you can help them with that through the checklist, but also I suppose if they have any initial inquiry, they can make contact with you as well and, and just find out a bit of a guide as to what they do need to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll definitely do that. And, and if they decide that um, they want to have a go at it themselves, that's great, but yeah. Oh, there might, might be tears. <laughs> yeah, because we've had a few few people who've said, "Yeah, I can do this myself, no problem." And it's a little bit like it would be a little bit like, like me um, wanting to change the spark plugs in my car and uh, and watching a couple of YouTube videos and saying, "Yeah, no problem, I can do this," and then thinking, oh, "I should have just paid the mechanic, you know, down the street, 150 bucks, because that's what he does for a living." So. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose the reality is, when it comes to setting up the these pages, you guys have got the skills. Um, finding all the directories, because how many directories are we talking about, roughly? Well, we're talking between 20 and 25. Okay. So, so really, any, any business that's local and wants local search needs to make sure those 20 to 25 directories are up to date? Yes. And uh, that, that will then make sure they come up in, in the top of the Google Places listings for their area? So that yeah. sort of be key. All right, so look, I suppose for the guys listening, there, there should be a link on the same page as this video so they can download your checklist. Uh, also with that checklist, I'm guessing there's a, there's a form that sort of gives the basic information if they need your help. And yep. if they've got an inquiry, they can also either email you or jump on your website and, and do some contact through there as well. Absolutely. That's easy. Well, we're very easy to find, and, and there's reasons for that, because <laughs> we're in Google My Business. Uh, <laughs> all right, so look, uh, Thanks for the input, guys. Is there any other things that we need to consider before we sort of wrap up this segment? No. If in doubt, think, if in doubt, Google yourself. You know, yeah. have a look yeah. at have a look at the first page, uh, the first couple of pages of where your business is, and and uh, and have a look and see if you're in some directory listings. Check if they're correct. I mean, mm. just do a little bit of research yourself, and um, yeah, and come come to us for any advice you need. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny piece of advice because very few people do this, like search their own name or search their own company. It used to be known as eco surfing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty relevant, right? Because that, that's what people are doing. They're, they're checking you out online and what are they finding? And as long as they're finding the right websites and not the wrong ones, um, yeah. that's okay. But even then, that's, um, we talk about that on another segment, I suppose, which is really about protecting your identity online and yeah. um, making sure that your reputation is clean. So I suppose some people, and I have heard the story, I've had a client that had this where with their Google places, someone put a negative comment up there in the reviews and they just had no idea how to remove it because I don't think you can. So really, is that the sort of thing you guys can help with as well? Yep, absolutely. And that's that's another thing that we do, reputation management. So we're across that and that's something we're taking into account with um, with all of this setup process as well. Yep. You know, we give business tools to, to manage this um, process, so. Fantastic. All right, guys, well, thanks very much for the info today. We've been short and sharp and to the point. Google my business. You've got to get on it or else you're not there, right? So uh, That's it. Uh, anyone got any questions, please contact the guys, shoot us an email, certainly download the checklist, and we will uh, catch up with you next time. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks very much for having us, David.